Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can improve your experience with ChatGPT by visualizing the conversation that you're having. So that in the end, you have something like this, where you can see the main topics that you covered in this conversation, the main clusters, then you can also reveal the gaps. So the things that are missing in the conversation, which can help you generate some interesting questions and steer the conversation in the direction that will allow you to develop this discourse further. If you're interested how it works, keep watching. I'm going to demonstrate everything step by step. So first of all, you need to open the Infranodus app and inside you have the GPT chat mode. And what happens here when we start using it is that wh whatever I type or whatever answer I get, it's going to be visualized as a graph. Um, I'm going to show you how it works. So for example, I can ask uh, what are the different ways to visualize chat GPT output? I just ask it a question. As you can see, all the words I used are the nodes and the co-occurrences of the words are the connections. Then I get the answer from ChatGPT and it's also visualized. So as I'm having this conversation, we have a visualization of the main ideas that come up in our conversation, how they're related to one another. The bigger the words or the nodes, the more important those ideas are. So for example, we talked about word and networks, they're important. Uh, maybe something like data was only mentioned once, so it's not so important. And then all the different colors, they represent different topical clusters. And let me just continue a little bit more. So, I'm, so here I received an answer where it says that there are several ways to, to visualize the output of ChatGPT, including word cloud, network graphs, interactive maps, and so on. Uh, so I can ask it, can you elaborate? And by the way, I'm using GPT 3.5, which is a default mode, but you can also use GPT 4. It's going to be slower, um, but the answers will be a little bit more elaborated and precise. So it's up to you what you use. Uh, here it provided me some more information on word clouds, show the frequency of words in the output, and timeline charts, track changes over time. Each vis visualization technique can offer unique insights according to this particular approach. Okay, so then I can ask it to to produce some more information on this topic. So maybe I will say, can you tell me more? Let's see what else it comes up with. As you can see, it's contextual, so it's going to know what we've been talking about, and it's going to add this on the graph, right? So as you can see here, it elaborated a little bit more on the network graphs, which is really clever of it because it's trying to be diverse. Uh, and it's talking about the visualization strategy. So now, now that I show you how this conversation visualization works, let me show you how you would actually use the graph to steer the conversation in an interesting direction. So as you can see, uh, the main things that we can see on the graph here, let me just uh, move myself over there so you can see what I'm talking about. So on the graph, you have the main concepts and this is already a very good visualization of what's happening in this discourse. We see that we, we're talking about uh, GPT output, uh, network graphs, interactive maps, timeline charts, and so on. Here, we have a smaller cluster. So it's actually a big cluster, but it has less important words. And we can zoom in and see what it is. It's also highlighted here, topic, visualization, offer, so for example, it means that maybe it could be interesting to develop those topics further, right? So what I can do with the graph, I can click those topics, uh, those concepts, topic, insight, visualization, technique, and then I'm going to send it to ChatGPT and it's going to take these nodes and produce an output which would connect those ideas much better or propose something interesting in relation to them. So for example, here it's talking about Topic insight visualization techniques can provide a visual representation of information uh, to help identify trends, patterns, and relationships among concepts. Then it's talking about the examples and the different techniques. Okay, great. So it connected uh, this topic uh, on topics to uh, the different types of visualizations. So this is how you would zoom into a topic and elaborate a little bit more on a particular aspect of it. If you want, you can also identify the gaps. So for example, uh, here we have gap insights in the analytics panel, and we can highlight those gaps in the network. We can also reiterate through the different gaps. 
okay? Or you could also do this manually. So for example, here I see that we have one topic here, output words and timeline charts. So for example, I could also connect some ideas from these two topics and let's say put out chat GPT word output, timeline charts, okay? And then generate some content in relation to these two topics that would connect them better. And GPT is very good in that. You see it uh, provided us with a response that connects those two topics, those two clusters that were not so well connected. And the response is talking about uh, like an idea of how you could actually uh, produce a timeline chart of chat GPT output and how you could visualize this information and how this visualization strategy is useful for historical analysis, news reporting, and tracking emerging trends over time. So I can even ask it, can you tell me more? And then hopefully it's going to take this last input and elaborate a little bit more on this topic. Let's see what it produces. Great, a timeline chart of ChatGPT output could display the frequency of words over time showing how often certain topics or ideas have been discussed and the corpus analyzed. Great. Okay, so this is interesting because we can also track how the conversation evolved over time. By the way, we have this feature here in Infranodos where we can see the evolution of the discourse over a period of time. You also have it accessible here uh, where you can also filter them through the timeline of the graph. Okay, so Let's see if ChatGPT could tell us something that we don't know about. So for example, um, let's generate another uh, structural gap and see if there is something interesting that we could produce there. So for example, here it's talking about word frequency and tracking event easy monitor analysis. So this is an interesting part because you can keep talking to ChatGPT or you can also use the built-in tools into Infranodos that allow you to bridge those gaps. And all these blue buttons here, they mean that you will uh, connect to GPT and ask it to generate an insight or a research question that would connect to those ideas together. So for example, here I click on insight question and it's going to generate a response. How can ChatGPT be used to make significant event tracking and analysis easier and visualize new and frequent word frequency in the word in, in a cloud format? Okay, so uh, how could ChatGPT be used for event tracking? The interesting part here is that once I have this result here from GPT, I can actually feed it directly into the graph and it's going to be sent to ChatGPT uh, so we're kind of making it have a conversation with itself. So you can also play with it in that way, generate the content from the graph automatically using GPT and then feed it to chat GPT to generate more content for you. So here it's tell telling you something about using chat GPT to track significant events and analyzing them uh, by analyzing a large amount of data in real time. Great. So then I can reset this highlight, move on look at the graph again, see if there is anything that I want to develop further. Um, whenever you can, use the graph because you can always zoom in and look at the periphery. So for example, relationship, reveal, concepts, highlight, connections. You can choose that, generate some content in relation to this. What you could also do is use the built-in tools in the analytics panel available here that highlight those ideas for you, right? So for example, here you have the discourse connector points. These are really interesting nodes uh, that have high influence but are not so frequently mentioned. It's like the most important people uh, in a certain community. You know, they will uh, know influential people but they don't have to have too many contacts. So here it selected a few of them for us and then we ask GPT to generate content and then once it generates an idea or a question, what significant information gathering techniques can help identify patterns in the relationship between gain and concept. So this sounds a little bit strange, but we could actually feed it into ChatGPT and 
ask it to generate something. Let's reiterate and generate some more. With what techniques can be used to identify significant relationships between information gain and concept pattern in order to generate meaningful insights? Okay, that sounds a bit strange. I could actually think of an interesting development of this question. I can also fix it a little bit and say that to identify significant relation between information and concept patterns in order to generate meaningful insights. Then I save it into the graph. This is being fed to ChatGPT and it's going to respond to us to its own questions. So this is a really amazing way to generate interesting ideas. You could think of any topic you want in this way and uh, help yourself ideate on it. Of course, we don't think that you're going to have, uh, you know, the ultimate answers like this, but it's definitely a really good way, way to get yourself started on a certain topic and generate some interesting ideas on it. And also it's a great training to uh, learn how you can use graph visualization for visualizing your own ideas, you know, because you could basically also write this on your own and just sometimes use uh, GPT to give you some encouragement to think in a certain direction. So for example, here again, we have a visualization. I see that I've been talking about, let's say I want to zoom out. And what I can also do to help myself do that is to use GPT to generate names for all these clusters identified in the graph, right? Like we have all these clusters. If, if you click this button here or this button there, it's going to show what are the main topics that we've been talking about. And let's just fix the alignment a little bit. So they look a little bit better. Okay, so we have here uh, insight techniques, text analysis, network mapping, trend tracking. Then we have word clouds, data visualization, conversation role, elaboration. So for example, I see that there is a really small cluster on uh, conversation. So I can click on that cluster, zoom in, click on these nodes, conversation, role, pattern, insight, and then develop it further again. Okay, great. So here it's talking about role playing and conversations that help provide insight into help into different perspectives by allowing participants to explore and experiment with various approaches and attitudes. Actually, this is a great idea. I could even ask uh, chat GPT to take on a role and then uh, visualize the output and see how the visualization changes depending on the role it takes. So for example, that could be an interesting idea for, for further development. I can actually uh, select it and save it into the project notes here. And then I'm going to keep the most interesting ideas for myself to use later. So basically this is how it would work. Feel free to try it out on infranodos.com. Uh, again, if you want to activate this mode, you need to go to the apps and choose the GPT chat mode here. And once you open it, um, in case this is closed, you can use the input here. And it's basically like a chat window where you can type in your ideas. And also, if at any point, let's say you already developed this conversation to a certain extent and you would like to see how you could analyze this graph, we have a workflow, uh, like a text diagnostic workflow here. Uh, and you can just follow the steps that are presented in this workflow to learn how you can analyze this graph and what kind of different aspects of this graph you should be looking at in order to develop your ideas. So I hope you find this helpful. Try it out on infranodos.com. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments to this video or through our support portal. I'm going to leave the links below. And yes, I hope you enjoy using the tool. Thank you very much.